ASH 2015 coverage continues. I'm Thomas Baldrick, joined now by Dr. Alaa Korana from the Cleveland Clinic. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Let's talk about this randomized trial you did using deltaparin thromboprophylaxis in cancer patients at high risk for venous thromboembolism. Um, why did you decide to do this particular study? So blood clots in cancer patients are a big deal. They're the second leading cause of death, and they contribute to short-term mortality, long-term mortality, morbidity, hospitalization. So a lot of bad things happen when cancer patients get blood clots. The good news is blood clots are preventable, um, but to prevent them, patients need to take a blood thinner prior to getting the blood clot. That's not feasible if you give a blood thinner to every single cancer patient because the risk of getting a blood clot varies considerably between you know, one type of cancer patient versus another. What we've done in the past is developed a risk score that identifies which cancer patients are most likely to get blood clots. And that risk score is what we use to identify the high-risk patients in this particular trial. And what we wanted to show was that A, the high-risk patients would have a high risk of blood clots, and B, that if we gave them a blood thinner, they would have less, less of a chance of getting a blood clot. Uh, this was an NIH-funded study. Um, we wanted to accrue about 200 patients, but we could only get to about 100 patients, uh, so it was underpowered for the final uh, primary outcome. But we were able to show that the blood clot risk went, was very high, 21% in patients who did not get a blood thinner, and it came down to 12% in patients who did get, get a blood thinner. So you use this measurement called the Corona score, same yeah. as your last name. Yes. Coincidence there, huh? Yes, yes. Um, what is the significance of that? How do you use that? Well, the, the, the good news about this risk score is that it's based on very commonly available clinical data. So it's the type of cancer, the complete blood count, and every cancer patient gets a complete blood count. Um, so the hemoglobin, the leukocyte count, the platelet count, and the BMI, the body mass index. So these are variables that are available for every single cancer patient, oftentimes even before they walk into the door of the cancer center. And so it's a very simple risk score to calculate. You don't need any fancy sort of bioassays or anything like that. And uh, so we use it to calculate the risk of patients all the time, and high-risk patients get assigned to either a clinical trial or, or a blood thinner to reduce the risk. So what do you think are the key results from this? I think one, it shows that the high-risk cancer patients, as defined by the risk score, cut off of three or higher, are at very high risk for getting blood clots. In our study, we did um, lower extremity ultrasounds and a scan of the chest before they even started on chemotherapy, and 9% of patients already had a blood clot before they had even started on treatment. And so one of the things we're calling for, because we've shown this before in a separate study, is that maybe all the high-risk patients, three and higher, should just be screened for, for blood clots. And I think that's one of the key findings of the study. This would be an important message to get to community physicians. Absolutely. Uh, blood clots are a big cause of death, of hospitalization, of the need for long-term anticoagulation. And why wait for patients to get symptoms if you can just screen them, identify a subclinical clot, and treat them? So what would you do next with this? Uh, we're already expanding this uh, to a much larger population of cancer patients, uh, and we're at, because the risk was so high in the three and higher risk score, we're expanding to two and higher. Uh, so we're doing a global study that's sponsored by Janssen. It's called Cassini, uh, and it looks at risk score of two or higher and randomization to rivaroxaban, which is an oral agent, so that's much more advantageous than a low molecular heparin versus placebo. That study just opened in the United States last month, and we hope to complete accrual by next year. Very well. We wish you luck with it. Come back and give us the results, Thank would you? Thank you. Okay. Yep, absolutely.